The engine has low power, it's not going to work. Yeah, all right, you guys, you've seen it. So we have tried to motor out to get a shakedown sail in, but um, the 3.5 metric tons that it has now loaded is way too heavy for this 9.9 uh, .9 horsepower Yamaha two stroke that we have at the stern. It's also kind of mounted barely low enough that you can uh, still control it somehow, get to the throttle, to the shifter, um, it's such a weird thing because it has a negative transom and um, the engine just disappears behind the boat, right? Yep, right. It's almost not possible to even to get to it really. So we managed, I don't know, I haven't really looked at the speed. What are you, what are you guessing? Like two, maybe two and a half knots or something? I think maybe two. Yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. Let's say between two and three knots with a little bit of wind on the Very nose. Two. No, 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 it was more than that. Yeah, over, over two knots, that's for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, yeah. I had steerage for and everything was good. And But you couldn't get much more out of it. Even like full throttle, you know, it would start surging at some point. And, and there's some current out here when you come out of the harbor. There is current that will uh, for sure push you into shallows if you are not strong enough engine thrust wise to overcome that and i think current can be up to three knots or something yep, out here right so the combination of the harbor that we are in and the boat being a lame duck is bad really bad once we had figured out how to get the engine a little bit lower into the water the 9.8 horsepower yamaha turned out to be just sufficient to push the boat at half speed there was still the problem however with the weight shift so whenever I was going forward uh, to race the jib sail for instance uh, the engine would come out of the water and start flying and that wasn't a very good thing. Soon it became clear to us that the output engine on a bracket was at best only a compromise, uh, temporary fix to get the boat out of the slip. In high waves it would always come out of the water and um, wouldn't be sufficient enough substitute for the actual diesel engine. So to fix our diesel engine became highest priority at this point. Hey guys, so we are now on the mainsail and the boat is kind of a brick. It is, it is definitely heavy uh, but very stable. So you can trim out easily and uh, in a moment when we are here in deeper water and got some open water we'll take the um, fork up with the jib sail. We have a jib out and um, right now we are kind of creeping along against the current here with about one knot over ground, one and a half, it's not much. But I guess here in the, in the Fehmarn um, Zund we have under the bridge or so easily a current of, I don't know, up to two knots or something. Yeah. 
extremely long here, so she likes to sail straight, that's for sure. And she is stable. That is a very stable vessel. It's a good boat, I would say, as a passage maker or something. But if you look for nimble, easy to maneuver, that's probably not the boat that you want. So now, under main, we're making about a knot against current again. I'm thinking about two knots current out here. So it's not terrible. We're actually sailing, so that's good. But um, yeah, so we are heading for the Bay of Horn. That is a good place to anchor. And then there's the lighthouse of Horn. And um, in front of it, one could also anchor. So these are kind of pretty decent spot. And as soon as we are further out, we'll probably go ahead and get that old uh, jib up. Because right now we are on the main one. Once we had the foresail up, the sail plan was uh, well balanced and the boat actually sailed nicely and was easy to trim out. Unfortunately, um, the GoPro died before we could get any footage of that. However, um, on the main sail only, um, she is hard to bring about. So I suggest if you uh, start out with one sail and have only one sail up, take the foresail up first that will allow the boat to be more maneuverable and, and it's easier to bring her about, in my opinion anyways. We had a successful shakedown sale. We'll go and have a beer and a burger. And a burger. Or a fish bun or whatever. Burger sounds good. Yeah? Okay. Sounds good then. There's a secret gate here. That's our favorite little bratwurst shack here. And they have all kinds of good stuff. From uh, anything you can imagine. From uh, burgers to fresh fish. Uh, calamari, everything, it's really good. So that's our favorite place to go to. We just got our shakedown sail done. That is our favorite, most favorite host, Martina. Uh, can, you, can you get us, can, yeah. <laughs> can, can you get us two beer, like a right line of beer? She's completely like out of her element. She loves that. She's a real natural in front of the camera, right? <laughs> <laughs>
Hi, Micha. Hi, Thorsten. So, Micha, Micha is a boss here, and he said, like, if I would bring him over to the Statue of Liberty and stop somewhere in the Caribbean on the way, he would give us our beers for free tonight. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so it's... All right, so seriously, guys, if you are in that neck of the woods, you want to come here because they make a wicked burger. It's probably the best bar burger I ever had. I'm not kidding you. This is really good. <laughs> so if you are ever in Großmoder Fähre, stop by and have one. It's delicious. Done and done. Cheers. So good. So what's the meal of the day here? It's steak, fries, and with some... Coleslaw? Yeah. Coleslaw and tzatziki and onions. fresh onions on top. Life mm, is good. Mm, mm. It's Delicious. good? Mm. Yeah. Perfect. I have the same, by the way. Your, your beer is empty. That's kind of a terrible situation. We can't have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm on it. <laughs> On it. Sorry, I'm slacking. So the other day we uh, took the boat out of the slip to go sailing with our outboard engine. And it works somewhat, but it's not ideal. Um, we had pretty high waves. And at some point when I was trying to go forward, um, you know, with a weight shift, uh, it was enough to uh, allow the engine to come out of the water. and. Yeah, so not great. We decided to turn back and um, well, today I figured, you know what, let's take the engine apart one more time. Let's dig deeper. So I pulled the head off and um, had a good look at the head gasket and everything. And guess what? Sure enough, she blew a gasket. So there's cooling water getting into the combustion chamber. And that's why the oil looks grayish. And uh, yeah, there's actually water in there. So uh, good news is I found the issue, but it's not unfortunately not the gasket itself. It is um, the whole um, cast iron piece, or I don't know what that actually is. Is it cast iron? I think so. Um, of the whole cylinder head that has failed. There's um, best would be I show you what I'm talking about. So you can see this completely broke off. And then the seal at this point failed and there's a pretty big gap that allowed water intrusion into the cylinder head. So the whole combustion chamber was filled with a mix of oil, diesel and uh, water, mostly water. Uh, so I, I cleaned it out, dried it out and everything and um, now I'm trying to get a whole new head unit with uh, the valves in it hopefully. I mean, I could probably grind in the valves one more time if I had to. And yeah, and then we'll put it back together and I guess we have an engine again. So that's it. Uh, at least I found something obvious that's wrong with it. And uh, that would also explain why she made so much smoke and why she wouldn't just fail. I mean, it took a long time and she got weaker and weaker and made more and more smoke as basically the gas uh, gasket gave in and obviously the cast iron part of the cylinder head that failed before and i think it all might have started with a faulty um with a faulty injector uh, that we changed too late so there was apparently one part of the cylinder that got just diesel spritzers and fired very hot and then the other thing is um i think the thermostat also failed and um yeah, I left the old one in, I checked it, I, I figured it was good, but now that I actually uh, looked at it again, the whole gasket of the thermostat melted away and uh, the thermostat itself was kind of rusty and gunky, not moving. So I have a new one, we'll put that together also and then hopefully, hopefully this engine will fire back up and everything will be just fine. So, well, that's, uh, that's a good and the bad news. So. All right, second start. After looking for a while, eventually I found a shop in the Netherlands that was offering for a pretty penny 
a head unit for this engine that is after all almost 50 years old. Not doing the job right in the first place and overlooking such an important thing like the thermostat turned out to be a very time-consuming and expensive looking mistake.